And lo, again, we're back together again. I love that. I'm excited to do a project with you today. We're going to use a math word that you probably already know what it is in our art because so much of art and math is all linked up together. We're going to, in this project, we're going to do symmetry. Now here's our little butterfly that we're going to paint. Symmetry is when you have a, a line, like a medium line down the middle, and everything on both sides of that line is exactly the same. And if you look at this butterfly, you can see it's exactly the same on both sides. I'm going to show you how we do it. Today we're going to be using a different medium. Medium just means the kind of supplies that we use. Like some days we use watercolors. Today we're going to use tempera paint. Tempera paint's different than watercolors. Look how bright the colors are. And you can't really see through them like you can watercolors. It's very similar to acrylics, but acrylics you have to be a little careful with. Temper is very washable. If you, if you get on your clothes, you better get it out of there really fast because it, it will stain. Acrylic, when it dries, it gets really hard and almost just like you could pull off pieces of it like plastic. And if you get that down the drain when you're cleaning your brushes, you just got to watch out. You can't dump it down the drain where acrylic it's a little safer, so that's why it's especially good for children to use. Okay, so let's go over our supplies. I have my two paintbrushes. I have one round, and then I have one flat. Um, you use whatever brushes you have, and it's going to work just fine. I have my palette. I have this little knife, my palette knife, but a little plastic knife would be just great. And I'm going to use it to dip paint out onto my palette with because I don't want to dip my brush in it and mix up my colors because we're going to be using these colors for a few more projects so you don't want to get them mixed up. Uh, let's see I have my water and my paper towels and I think that's it that's everything we need and I have my palette right here you may use um, if you have a piece of plastic like this or a couple of paper plates will be great. That will work good. So, the first thing I'm going to do to make this symmetrical, this is a square. I'm going to fold it in half like this. And it's, this is going to be a tricky, fun painting project because we're only going to paint half on this one side and then we're going to fold it like this and rub it and it's going to print over on this side. It's kind of fun to do that. So the first thing we'll do is I'm going to paint the head. Now I don't want to paint it too huge because if I do, then my whole thing will get really huge. I got the wrong brush. I'm going to wash it up really good. Give it the test. See if I got it. Reshape it. All right, I'm going to use this one. I'll get it wet first but I don't want it really wet. Oh, ah, I did the very thing I said not to do. <laughs> Take some and use your palette knife and get some on your palette. That's going to be lots. Probably way too much. I'll put some back. All right. I'm going to wipe this off because when I put it in the white, I wouldn't want to put any white in it. So the first, that's the first color I'm going to get is the black. All right, now we're ready to go. All right. Load, load on both sides. Turn my brush over so I get plenty of nice paint on there. I'm going to paint the head probably about that. A third of the way down. I'm going to start right there. Just from the crack. I'm going to paint half of the head. Let's just try it. And then you'll see what I mean. Okay, if you press that, don't rub it super hard because it might just get really big and funny looking. So I'm gently doing it. Mm, see that? See, it's just perfect, the same on both sides. Now I'm going to do the 
thorax. Get more paint. I'm going to go down this side. The thorax is right there. I saw a butterfly the other day, but it wasn't this kind. This orange kind is a monarch. I probably studied about that with Mrs. Hill. All right. Don't you like this? Half of it, it's already painted for you. Oh, now look at that. I didn't have quite enough paint there, so I'm just going to go over and I'm going to touch it up a little bit. And then I'm going to go back, fill in those white spots. Right there. Okay. I like that. That's a little white right there, but I think it looks good. I like it. Okay. Now I'm going to do the abdomen. That's the last piece, and it's bigger. So I'm just going to go right down here. Only on one side. There we go. Gently. Let's take a look. Oh, I need to add a little paint. That's okay because I'll be right inside here and we'll give it another print. We're making a print, actually. Get it right there. This is going to be great. The kind of butterfly I saw yesterday was kind of a whitish greenish one. They kind of look like the kind that go to my cabbages that I'm not happy to see. You know what? I think I'm going to make him just a tad longer. Whoops, I got on the other side, but that's okay. Just a tad longer. Because it'll print this way too. Gently, I'm tickling my paper. Whoops. One thing you learn when you're painting is how much paint to use, how much water to use, how, how much paint is too much paint. You just have to practice, keep doing it. Okay, I am going to take this, my smaller brush. If you have one, use it. If you don't, it's great, it'll be fine. You use what brushes you have and it's gonna make a really nice project. I'm going to do the antennas. Butterfly antennas are curved and then they have that kind of little bump on the end. Did you ever learn about a butterfly's tongue? Okay, let's do this. See, I made that kind of thin because I don't want it to get too big. I don't want it to be so heavy the butterfly can't lift his head up. Ah, oh, needs a little touch up. A little touch him up. I'm going to go right down here where he is. You're probably so careful you can you can learn to do it. Oh, it's looking good. I'm going to just do that gently. Yeah, now he is looking. That looks like a butterfly body, <laughs> a long body. That's good. We'll make him big. Okay, so now I'm going to use go back to my other brush. It's a little bigger. I'm going to do this wing now. We're going to do it in sections. So I'm going to come out, I'm going to go to there. It's going to come out of this part. And I want to use plenty of paint. So I'm going to reload here. Oh, it got thicker than I planned on it, but I think it'll be okay. About to there. All right, let's, let's print this. See how we're looking. At the very end, when we get it all done, we'll go back and touch up more if we need to. I'm just going to touch this up kind of. I have to learn how to get enough paint on my brush, but not so much that it gets globby. But this still makes it pretty much the same, don't you think? Now the skinny part, I happen to have a flat brush, so the skinny part I'm using on the edge. I'm using the edge of my brush to make it skinny. All right. There's that part. Now 
Let's do the bottom of the wing. I'm going to start right here. Try to use more paint this time. Make it come up in a maybe a nice curve if I can do it. How about that? I'll just make it flatter. More paint. See how we got it now. See how it looks. This might this might be more paint. A little. But this is good. See how when it when you push your brush down it gets wide? And then when you don't push it down so much, it's not as wide. All right, I like that. All right, now let's do the bottom wing. I'm gonna come out to here from this lower, from his um, abdomen. I'm gonna come out this way. Everybody's butterfly is gonna look different. What I wanted to tell you too was you may use whatever color you want to paint in your butterfly. I'm just using orange. Um, there's some nice, a pink and purple I think would be the colors, or orange to pick. Or you could use red or yellow, but it'd be not blue because we're going to be using that on a lot on some of our next projects. Unless you have more temper paint at home. All right. Just going to do this, touch them up. I'm glad we can touch them up. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to go up here. Let me see. I'm going to make him come out this way and give him a curve to make him pretty. And see how that is. Good. All right. Now I'm going to do this next line right in here. I'm not going to make it too close because I want to make sure that I leave some spots for white. So let's see. Let's see how I'm leaving this big space there, right here. Try to do it that way. Oh, I saw it was a little smudgy, but that's okay. See right there? Oh, a little smudgy. Okay, now let's do another one. These are called scales. You probably made those um, stages of a butterfly's life with Mrs. Hill. Starts out a little egg. God is so amazing. Then it turns into a worm and it just eats like crazy because it's hungry. Okay, we'll touch it up in a, when we're done here. Then let's see, let's put one right here. There. After that, it spins a little cocoon. Let's see, let's do one more here. Then it goes to sleep. And while it's sleeping, God is changing it. It just hangs there. I don't know how long it takes, pretty quick. And then, and then when it's time, it just comes out and it's this gorgeous, beautiful butterfly. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these black. Circles. We'll have to go fix it up on the other side. That'll be okay.
Probably just need to use more paint. I always do that. I don't use enough. Okay. Just make that kind of close that in a little and a little right there. And that's going to be great. We'll fix it on the other side in a minute. Okay. And just close that in. And this is going to be great. It doesn't have to be perfect circles. It can just be like dots. Okay, now one thing about this paper, it's not taped down, so I can start to fix this. And I'm going to have to get more paint. Whoa. Feel free to stop this video and catch up if you need to. Because we're going to move along quickly here. I wasn't planning on that glob there, but I think it's going to be okay. Sometimes you get some nice surprises. Sometimes the surprises or mistakes actually turn out to be the best part. Have you ever noticed that? That's why we're not making any mistakes, really. Everything that happens like this, we're learning. Actually, if you're making a lot of mistakes, it shows you're learning. Did you know that? It shows you're trying. And that's really good. All right, so let's just do this one right here. I'm just going to try to fill it in. All right. Now, when I paint up some more, I think I'm going to just really try to use more paint. See how when I want a skinny line, I hold it straight up like that, go on the edge. When I want a fatter line, I go like that. Okay, that's going to be good. I'm going to take my palette knife, get more black. I'll wash it too if I need to. All right, so let's put some... Let's put some scales down here, and I'm really going to try to use more black so that I don't have to repaint so much. Well, that's better, a little. And this one. There are so many butterflies. Some of them are this big that live in jungles. And there's so many beautiful colors. Our God makes beautiful things. Okay. Rub, rub. Let's see. Let's go like this. The cabbage butterflies are the ones I don't want to see around my garden. All right, so I'm just going to try to make some, some white, some spots for white, some places that I can paint white. Let's see. Hopefully I've got enough paint. I can tell I don't, but... All right, there we go. Did you ever see a picture of those blue morpho butterflies? They're the most beautiful dark blue. I'm going to have to fix that over there, but that's going to be okay. 
I can do that and then I'm going to just color that in and maybe I'll just color this in too right there okay more paint use more paint here we go we'll just touch this up really quickly I cut mine out after I did it because I thought it would look nice. I'm going to hang it up right behind me. Okay, let's see what we've got. Okay, pretty good. Just going to do it here. Do it here. And here. Then I have to turn it and look right here, I think. There. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush really good. You know, I'm dabbing it on the bottom. I'm not grinding, remember, because I want to take care of these brushes. Oh, I still need to do it. Sometimes you have to put your fingers down here at the bottom, close to the ferrule, and give it a little scrub. Yeah, that helped. Okay, and then I'm going to wash this round quickly. Give it a bath. Shape it so it doesn't have a bad hair day. Now I have to give this a fast dry. Really fast. I want to blow everything away. This needs to be pretty dry because I don't want to be smearing. Oh, I like it. I think it looks good. You can see how um, tempera paint, it's not the same as watercolor, is it? Okay, so now I'm going to get some orange with my palette knife. Make sure it's really clean. The plastic knife works perfect for this. And I'm going to put some over here on my palette. This stuff is such a nice consistency. It's kind of like whipping cream. Okay, so I'm going to use, for my big spaces, I'm going to use my bigger brush. Get it loaded. These dots I'm going to leave white, but these, these parts in here, I'm going to do them orange. So I press down, I get a wide stroke. This I'm not going to do symmetrically. I don't think. Maybe I should try it. You think I should try it? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm just going to paint it. I'm going to paint it quickly. I talked to Miss Christine and she's going to put a link on to show where to post your pictures so I can see them. Or if your moms want to text them to me, that's great too. Because I love seeing your pictures. All right. Okay, there, my big spots. I use the flat side and press down into the belly of the paintbrush. That's what it's called, the belly. And a good paintbrush will hold lots of paint on its belly. This isn't the best paintbrush I can tell. When it's wide I press harder. Let me see. Maybe I'll just leave this, put this one dark. I mean with paint. These I'm going to leave white because I think that would look really nice. And this one I'm going to do. Alright, let's go over here. 
The nice thing about this, I can turn my paper around. There. So if you were to do a purple and a pink butterfly or pink or red, it'd be so pretty. These ones are called monarchs. They don't live around here. You know why? They only eat the certain plant called milkweed. And they don't grow around here. They grow more where there's prairies or lots of pastures. Not here in the Pacific Northwest. They might over in Leavenworth. You might have seen them over there. When I was a little girl, there were monarch butterflies around. Oh, and you know what? One time I was in California, and the monarch butterflies migrate to this certain place in Mexico. It's amazing if ever you study about migrations. And they all, will, there'll be billions of them together. And I was in this place where they were migrating. It was like, how could I describe it? It was just so amazing. There were millions of them flying everywhere. And they were, God made them know where to go. And they go down to Mexico to this little village. And the villagers wait for them to come because they come at the same, about the same week every year. And they stay there and hang on the trees. Anyway, I better get this a little more. And then they stay there for the winter. And they're kind of dormant, kind of sleeping. And then a certain date they all fly. They fly over the Gulf of Mexico. If you can believe it, that is so far. And they go, they fly some of them back as far as Canada. That's why part of the reason you can just say, wow, we have a wondrous God. He only does wondrous things. Just his creation, all his creation is praising him. Did I get it all the same? Yes, this one is blacker than this one, but that's okay. They look really different. Probably if you had all those butterflies together, they'd all look different. They'd be a little bit the same. Okay, now I'm gonna get out on my palette knife. And then I wanna make sure it's really, really clean. Wash it. Oh, my water is black. Deep is black. The family color. Okay. I'm going to get some white. I'm just going to fill in those holes. And then, he'll be finished. I'm going to start at the top so I don't make a mess. I'm using a smaller brush for this because I want to be careful. I like temper paint. It's nice to use. I like it. It doesn't move around with water like watercolor does. but it sure has some pretty colors. Next week, we're gonna do another project with tempera paint using really bright colors. I think you're gonna like it a lot. I had a lot of fun getting it ready for you. Dot, dot, dot. Those of you that have sent your pictures to show me, I love them. They're so nice. I really look forward to seeing them. I'm glad you're having fun with your brothers and sisters too. I think that's wonderful. Okay. I'm gonna start down here because it's further away and I won't put my hand in it. 
because sometimes I forget that. There's this one. This one and that one. We're born in her. All right, almost finished. Ooh, probably can't guess. Art in flight. Art takes flight. I'm trying to pick the birds that are around here that you see common ones. If you want, in the summer, a good way to get birds to come to your house, they probably aren't going to come to your bird feeders that much because there's plenty of food outside for them. They just fly around and find it. A lot of bugs, flowers, plants. The good thing to do if you want to get some would be to have a little bird bath. But you don't have to have a big fancy thing with the store. Say, Mom, we have to buy a $300 bird bath. You can just take something kind of big. It doesn't even have to be this big, smaller, that's flat. You know, like one of these that goes on a big, a big um, flower pot. And just set it down on the ground. Put some water in it. Put a few little rocks in it because they don't like it real deep. They won't jump in a real deep bird bath. I like to put mine where I can look out the window and I can watch them. And then you just put water in. If you have a kitty, you got to think about, oh, where can I put it so that my kitty won't get it? Um, and they do like it if you put it like near bushes because then they can jump out of the bushes and but they can get back and hide so they feel safe. And then you just change the water every week or so so it doesn't get too yucky. And you'll probably see them coming to drink, which is exciting. All right, here it is. So what I did with mine, now here's there's two things you can do. You can... Say you could use blue or green and make a pretty wash around it if you wanted to save the whole piece of paper. Or I cut mine out, which I thought was fun. Now I'm going to have two to put up there. Don't you think that's going to look really colorful? Okay. I have find my iPad. And are we ready? Now these are little birds that you're probably very familiar with because you hear them all the time. They are in Hawaii. It's a little different kind in Hawaii, but these are doves. These particular ones are called morning doves. And the reason they're called that is because their sound, it's kind of a mournful, sad sound. Now the dads, are the ones that call, not the moms. Look, they have pink feet. Pretty colors, huh? There's the mom on the nest. They always have two eggs. That's a nice little tight nest, isn't it? And it's in the bushes there. Oh, there's a baby one. They're really good parents. That's a pretty one. See his pink feet. But the dads, you hear them calling in the springtime the most because the dads are looking for their wives. So they're singing to them. And you know what? They'll be together all of their lives, a pair of doves. Okay, one other thing I want to tell you about them. They will, they, they won't come and perch on your bird feeder. They um, will go to the ground underneath and glean, pick up some seeds because they like to eat seeds. 
And if you ever get a chance to watch them drink out of your little bird bath or out of puddles, they don't drink and then tip their heads back like most birds. They can actually suck it, suck up the water like they're drinking out of a straw. Pigeons do the same thing. You can tell they're cousins to pigeons. All right, listen to this song. It's coming. Have you heard it? Sometimes it sounds like they're singing two notes at the same time. It's amazing. And they're loud. Makes me think of I'm going to stop him in the um, Song of Solomon when, he, when he's talking about spring, spring. Spring has come and there's new growth and the time of the turtle dove. That's a different kind of dove, but you can hear the, the sound of the dove in the land. It's really wonderful because it's a time of fruitfulness and new life and abundance and it just gives glory to God. All right, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll be together next time. Bye. What was that? Was that a dad? Is it okay? What happened? Oh. <laughs>